Okay. So in today's session, we will be starting the strength of material. Now. Yes, uh, very good evening to all. So not only, uh, no, basically it is our first chapter, but before that, uh, quickly we will go through the syllabus. Yeah. Not only syllabus part. In this syllabus, we will go something like this. We will uh, develop some understanding of the stress and strain, right? That is going to be our first chapter. In that same chapter, the subtopic will be elastic constant and poison ratio, right? Anybody, as of now, I have not started our discussion, but I just want to uh, know, uh, ask you a few points regarding this strength of material. Anybody know what is the meaning of poison ratio? What is the formula? Tell me guys, do not hesitate. I know that I have not started our course, but still I'm asking the question so that I can know in what depth you know this particular subject. Tell me guys. So basically the ratio of the lateral strain to the linear strain, we define this particular term to be poison ratio. Now tell me what is the value of the poison ratio, if I'll ask you. What is the value of the poison ratio? So generally, uh, no, poison ratio will be varying from 0 to what? 0 0.5. This is the basically the value of poison ratio. We denote it by mu. That is what the one of the elastic constant we have. Poison ratio is one of the elastic constant. So now just tell me what is the value of 0.5 and what is the value of zero? For which material we have the poison ratio to be zero, and for which material we have the poison ratio to be 0.5? Tell me guys. Yes, mu will be equal to 0 0.5 for what? For water. How? How can you say that? You know that the volumetric strain that I am going to discuss afterwards in the strength of material. This is what the formula for volumetric strain. In this one, when you put mu is equal to 0 0.5, this value is going to be zero when volumetric strain is equal to zero then change in volume will also be zero change in volume is zero that means change in density will also be zero and you know that the water is incompressible fluid right so that's the reason 0.5 is justified what about zero mu is equal to zero for which material do not worry i'm discussing strength of material content only but i just want to ask you some of the questions so that i can know whether you know something about this subject or not, so that we can have the development for that. If I'll ask you what is the mu is equal to zero value, for which material we have, that means there is no lateral strain. Tell me guys. 
Anybody know the answer? No. No, 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 no. Tell me, guys. Lateral strain is zero. There is no doubt. But I'm asking you for which material actually? This type of, uh, there has to be some material right in the universe for which the poison ratio to be zero. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Where we use the cork? Where we use the cork? Basically the bottle. Whenever you have the bottle. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Whenever you have the bottles, there we place the what cork material so that whatever the leakage of the fluid will be there cannot be possible. Why the leakage of the fluid will not be possible? Because the lateral strain will be zero. Suppose there is a thermal expansion is happening because of heating condition or maybe some lateral expansion is happening. But cork is a such a material where the lateral expansions are not allowed. In fact, linear expansion is possible. But the moment the lateral expansion will be there or contraction will be there, this bottle neck will be what? will be just uh, widen up and the fluid may start what leaking up that's the reason we use the uh, no, uh, for just closing the bottle uh, material what we use cork because poison this is what zero for that particular cork material please note down then we will discuss about the mohor circle in chapter 2 mohor circle for plane stress and plane strain conditions right plane stress and plane strain these two terms are very very important for gate examination of course, thin cylinder I'm going to discuss in the sixth chapter. Shear force, bending moment, that is our third chapter, right? Shear force and bending moment diagram. Bending and shear stress, that is our, uh, you know, fourth chapter, you can say. The concept of the shear center is, we will discuss, right? Little bit about the shear center. What do you mean by the shear center? After that, deflection of the beams that we are going to discuss. This is my fifth, fifth chapter. This deflection will be my sixth chapter, right? The torsion of the circular shaft will be seven. Have you seen the torsion of these uh, other than circular, non-circular shaft? Anywhere before that, have you seen the torsion of square section, rectangle section, or rectangular channel, or you know square channel, other than the circular shaft? Check it out. Check it out and let me know. Tell me guys. Yes. Tell me guys. Please participate. Yes. Tell me guys. Hello, hello. I'm asking you that. Have you seen anywhere the torsion of the non-circular shaft or non-circular channel, a square channel or something like that? It is there. But in our gate syllabus, it is only mentioned torsion of the circular shaft. Understanding what I'm saying? All of you are understanding? That is our seventh chapter, right? Eighth chapter will be, you know, thin cylinder. Thin cylinder and thick cylinder also, from what we will discuss because in gate examination, hardly we had, uh, you know, we had only one or two times uh, about the thick cylinder. The question has been asked, but in PSU examination continuously, you know, in fact, in fact, in ESC examination, they are touching the thick cylinder also. Eilers theory of the column, that will be our ninth chapter. We will talk about the columns. And of course, this, uh, you know, thermal stress and strain gauge and rossets. That I will cover in the first chapter itself, that is thermal stress. The strain gauge and rosette I will cover along with the Mohs circle. Right? And then we will be going to have the testing of the material by using what? Universal testing machine, testing of hardness and impact test. Right? Of course, this thing you will learn in the you know, uh, material science also. Right? Now, what are all these standard books that you are going to follow? What are all the books you are following as of now? What are all the books that you are following as of now? Some Biswas.
Any other book? Anybody know? Any other book? Anybody know? Tell me guys, the very first book that I will recommend is Mechanics of Material. Mechanics of Material by Gere and Gundo. That is one of the famous book that we have. Second, you can follow. You know, mechanics of material by BC Punamia. What is the third book that you can follow? Tell me, guys. One book is there, you know, mechanics of material only. Why again we have the Gere only, but here we have Gere and Timosenko. That is a combined book is there. These are the books that you can follow, right? Highly recommended book will be for gate examination. This is the two highly recommended books. Suppose somebody said that a fluid mechanics, right? Fluid mechanics, if you are preparing for gate examination, SK Saum in Biswas. These are the compulsory book. That means you cannot escape any problem. Starting from the first chapter is the fluid is static from what? End of the turbulent flow. You cannot skip any problem from this particular textbook. That is a mandatory book. Similarly, the mandatory book will be what? This thing. BC Punamia and what? Gere and Gurno. No question will be asked beyond this particular book. At least if you follow. Suppose they are asking the strength of material, a very good level problem, five problem in gate. Suppose that 2023, I'm talking about gate 2023. If they are just giving five questions from the song, a very good question, you will be able to answer four questions. Definitely. That is my guarantee. If you just follow, you know, these two books. That is mechanics of material by Gary and Goodno. Mechanics of material by what? BC Punamia. Please note down. All of your understanding, the syllabus coverage and all. So in today's lecture, we will talk about the stress and strain. That is basics of the stress and strain, right? Yes or no, guys? Understanding? Correct. So more we will focus on, again, fundamental thing because fundamental things are very, very important. Right. What is the meaning of plane stress? What is the meaning of plane strain conditions? Right. Now, once it is done, let me know. We can discuss about some basic fundamental thing about loading condition. How many types of load actually we have? Now, once it is done, let me know. Is it done, all of you? Perfect. So just note on the basic fundamental thing. Very, very important fundamental thing that is I'm going to talk about the loads. How many types of load actually we do have, right? If I, So if I just talk about the load now, Load can be defined with respect to time. Can also be said with respect to cross section. And can also be said with respect to distribution of the load. Based on the distribution of the load.
right now with respect to time we can define the load two types static load and then we have dynamic load the static load and then we have the dynamic load right what do you mean by static load what do you mean by the static load the load which is not going to vary with respect to time that is called static load understanding tell me guys in this category we can classify further dead load and then we have gradually applied load what about the dynamic load the dynamic load is further classified under two category the first one i'm going to say impact load and then you are going to have fatigue load right note down very very important these things now coming to this static load my dear friend what do you mean by this static load the load which is not going going to vary with respect to time is called static load that means when you draw the plot between load versus time then it will be constant this type of load we call dead load what is the example of the dead load what is the example of the dead load can i say self weight of any body can i say self weight of any body in fact the load is a what the load is suppose that we are talking about the vector quantity then the load whose magnitude as well as direction both does not vary with respect to time and that is called the static load understanding or not all of you right now the next thing will be what do you mean by the gradually applied load anybody have any idea what do you mean by the gradually applied load what do you mean by the gradually applied load yes tell me guys an example also i want i want the examples also varying load no see static means it is not varying with respect to time that means what increasing from low to high is still not that much clear anybody else want to give some highlight about this so i will draw the diagram from that diagram it will be uh, mostly clear the picture will be clear i think so the load versus time if i just plot it something like this or rather to say plotting will be i can draw like this your know, plotting will be there something like this exactly 45 degree or exactly 45 degree we are going to have the load versus time suppose that right that means with respect to time if i just vary if i just vary the time whatever the load variation is there that is not that much high in fact you vary the time but whatever the fluctuation in the load it's not that much high that's why we are calling even though the load is varying with respect to time for initial some time period but still we are saying this load to be what gradually applied load i will tell you the example p patients i will tell you i will tell you now i am plotting another graph look at very carefully again this might be look very silly thing but believe me these are the very very fundamental fundamental, uh, fundamental when you just able to solve about to see the question that is been asked in the you know recent gate paper you will realize what depth they are touching the question suppose that when you are going to vary the load suppose when you are going to vary the time a very very small same time suppose i'm going to vary the same time delta t only but right now if you see the changes in the load is going to be very very high such a type of loading condition where the load is going to vary with respect to time like anything those loads are called as impact loads 
the loads which are happening for very short interval of time that is impact load what is the example where we can have these impact loads any testing machine have you seen i jot i jot impact testing machine yeah bad ball is yeah but you know you can say that approximately just note of the example i jot impact testing machine whatever the loads are happening there whatever the loads are happening there you know that is very sudden whenever the moment you are about to fracture that material by just hanging the loads you know you have the structure something like this you have the material now there is a hammer something like this now when you re release it it will try to strike it out and within a short span of time it is just striking with a very very high amount of load that is about impact loads right what about the fatigue load what about the fatigue load still we have not covered about the you know still we have not covered about the you know gradually applied load tell me guys fatigue load that is a very very important thing fatigue load we also call cyclic load your machine design your machine design will be started with this particular chapter that is fatigue loading concept fatigue loads are those loads whose magnitude or direction or both magnitude and direction you know changes with respect to time when it is continuously applied when it is continuously applied right now what is the example of the gradually applied load all the some problems sir what do you mean by this sir what do you mean by this things i will tell you first of all note on this things i will discuss more about the you know loading condition i will ask you the question so that you can classify done all of you all of you done perfect now why i am saying that all the strength of material problems are classified under you know uh, this thing what we call gradually applied load perfect now now let me uh, you know ask you the question example number 1 so when i mention something like this loading condition there is a bar at the centroidal axis i am applying the load p tell me it is a which type of load option a static load static load you know uh impact load you can say that none of the above keep answering these questions so when i apply the load something plus minus p option a static load option b static load gradually applied load you know impact load question 3 will be there is a mass which are happening at a distance of h now it is striking now it this particular mass is striking this particular bar at a distance of h in this case what type of you know loading condition we need to consider for designing purpose fatigue load impact load gradually applied load none of the above fourth example will be pulley fourth example will be pulley
right in the power transmission through pulley which type of loading condition will be there which type of loading condition will be there fatigue load option a option b will be impact load option c will be gradually applied load option d will be dead load in the first option what will be the correct option first one whatever the you know it's a static one it's a static load first of all why it is a static load see the load is not varying with respect to time even direction is also not changing it is just applied in the what positive x direction that's it and simply we say it's a gradually applied load it's a gradually applied load right in the second problem when you just observe in the first cycle we are applying plus p in the second cycle we are applying what minus p magnitude is same magnitude is same but the direction is what reversed i said that the load whose magnitude or direction or both magnitude direction changes with respect to time we say it's a fatigue load all of you are understanding my point we say it's a fatigue load in fact we call completely reverse fatigue load it's a completely reverse so we have the further classification that you will understand in the machine design right i'm just uh, writing as of now for the you know so that you can you, you can have just a revision when you just start uh, doing this uh, you know uh, machine design so just note down completely reverse completely reverse you know axial load what is the answer for third one what is the answer for third one which type of stress condition we need to consider see if we talk about the stress we must talk about the load also because stress cannot be generated until unless you are applying the load anything you are disturbing the inertia of the body the body will say who the hell you are who is disturbing me i am going to oppose that particular motion then there is a resistance in the material because of that resistance stress will be generated that resistive force per unit area we call is stress remember this so without load any nothing will be possible your storm is not at all able to you know able to start we can start just uh, without understanding the load conditions right so here we have the impact loads amount of load mg is acting for you know uh, for very very short span of time suddenly it is going to hit this particular bar right so we need to consider impact factor also and that is what we consider in the what impact loading the power transmission through pulley you know that there is a tension side and there is a slack side what is happening it's a fluctuating load it is fluctuating from t1 to t2 that means the magnitude is not uh, here what is happening here the magnitude of the load is changing yes or no guys here the magnitude of the load is changing with respect to time check it out i said that whenever the magnitude or direction or both changes with respect to time we say it simply fatigue load and one of the classification is what fluctuating fatigue load no doubt fluctuating fatigue load all of you are understanding what we are talking about tell me guys no doubt so we have seen the two classification of the fatigue load one is completely reverse axial load or bending load and second is what complete uh, fatigue uh, fluctuating fatigue load we have further two also two categories there alternative uh, fatigue load and one more is what repeated load repeated load when is when the load is varying from 0 to p 0 to p 0 to p by 2 something like that right note down very very important now once it is done please let me know is it done all of you so can we go back to this classification further now with respect to cross section my dear friend you can just write you know 
whenever any load is acting perpendicular to the cross section we say it's a normal load in fact do not worry i will ask you what is the meaning of bending load twisting load how to classify axial load right shear load do not worry when any load is acting parallel to the cross section we we say shear load because if we don't understand the meaning of normal load and shear load we cannot understand the meaning of normal stress and shear stress right no doubt no, very very important based on the distribution of the load we have further classification one is concentrated load one is concentrated load one is concentrated load right and then we are going to have distributed load one is a concentrated load and second we have distributed load right what is the concentrated load whenever the any load is acting whenever any load is acting at one particular point whenever any load is acting at one particular point whenever any load is acting at one particular point we say concentrated load whenever there is a distribution of the load is there like this or like this we say it's a uniform varying load this is what udl load this is what point load please note down now done all of it done let me ask you a very good good problems so that you can have the development of you know bending load and twisting load remember whenever we say bending couple bending moment it also one type of load only right do not under estimate that we have the load something when it is shown by arrow no whenever the couple is also there it is also one type of load only right now now let me ask you one question so that i can know whether you know about the bending couple or twisting couple or not no so just note down the question there is a soft the soft is going to be have the axis i'm going to take x axis like this z axis you are going to have perpendicular to this one perpendicular to this one and the y axis you are going to have something like this now what i'm doing i'm just supplying the twisting moment suppose that i'm applying one couple like this moment about x axis and i'm applying one moment about z axis i'm applying one moment about z axis suppose that so i'm giving you the option option a mx is twisting couple mz is what twisting couple option b mx will be twisting couple mz will be bending couple mx will be twisting couple bending couple and mz will be also be you know uh twisting d will be none of the above d will be none of the above tell me guys it's a very good problem
Yes. Tell me guys, what are all the answers that you are giving me? All are giving me B options. B is correct. Whenever any couple is acting along the longitudinal axis, what I'm saying? Any couple is acting about, uh, about the longitudinal axis. Any couple. Is acting. About the longitudinal axis. We say it's a twisting couple. This is my longitudinal axis. Along the longitudinal axis, whenever any moment is acting, it will try to twist this particular, you know, shaft. And this is called twisting couple or moment. Whenever any couple is acting perpendicular to the what? Longitudinal axis or, per, or we can simply say that any couple which is acting, any couple which is acting, any couple which is acting about transverse axis is said to be called as bending couple. When you try to see this particular moment about z-axis, right, it will try to bend this particular beam, something like this. Check it out. Yes or no, guys? All of you, please check it out. Right? Is it done? All of you. So which option is correct? B option is correct. B option will be correct. Right? Now we got some fundamental understanding of the load. Now we can discuss about the you know, uh, loading condition. After that, we can discuss about the stress and strain. Done. Can I move to the next one? Perfect. So note down the chapter number one, stress and strain. Chapter number one, stress and strain. So why actually the things are become complicated why the stress has been generated why the stress in the material has been generated what's the reason for that Not only question number three, question number three, one important question I'm asking you, suppose load is acting PP, right? And this particular rod is having some diameter D, right? Now tell me, I'm just taking bar one. This is, let's say that bar A. I am just taking one another bar, bar B, and what I am doing, my dear friend, I am just applying the force like this. Simply, what I can do, yeah, PP. Now tell me what will happen in the bar A and bar B. In which case deformation will happen, and in which in which case deformation will not at all happen.
see whenever you are applying tell me guys bar a won't happen see whenever suppose you are going to take the point a and point b the bar will simply displaced it will simply what displaced to this particular position the length will not change a dash and b dash position length will not change the difference between a, a dash and b dash will not change this is the rigid body it is just behaving like a rigid body and we will solve by using what engineering mechanics right but in this case what will happen this is the point a and this is the point b when you try to pull it out there will be deformation like this and then my dear friend a dash and b dash the distance between a dash and b dash will change there is a deformation will happen and when there is a deformation my dear friend you know that it's not a rigid body it's a deformed body and you know that injury mechanics will not be able to solve this particular problem bar b problem we have to solve by using strom note down very very important understanding the difference between bar a and bar b right it's a very very important what happen when i take the bar c when i take the bar c and i'm going to apply the load p like this p and like this 2p now tell me what will happen this is the bar c same diameter same diameter this is the bar c how we how this particular problem will be solved 2p in the right direction p in the left direction so what i will say here the bar c will be what displaced as well as deform understanding or not it will displace and after that it will deform understanding right so here displacement and deformation both will happen note down very very important this question has been asked in one of the bark interview because their favorite topic is what strength of material only the moment you say strength of material they will like like anything and they will just dig it out from you how much depth you know the uh, no the understanding of this particular subject so when i talk about the stress so there will not be any stress my different in the rigid body that you are looking in the bar a but bar b what will happen the moment you are trying to loading this particular bar initially bar was at the rest condition simply he is enjoying his life the moment you try to disturb it you try to elongate it this bar will say let it let it be in my own space let it be my own inertia but the other load is saying that external load is saying that no no i just want to pull it out and because of that there is a resistance in the material to that deformation and because of that what will happen internal when you cut this member you are applying the load in this direction there is a internal resistance force will be developed that internal resistance force we say per unit area stress value that is my stress stress is not load per unit area external load per unit area is wrong definition right but my dear friend summation of forces must be zero whenever any body under rest condition or under static equilibrium conditions you know that p minus r must be zero so p will be equal to r so that's the reason all the textbook they are writing r equal to p only please note it down but in the interview you have to say that the resistance force per unit area right that is called as stress and what is the unit we have mega pascal giga pascal or newton per mm square or newton per meter square it depends on the you know what other units are given for other terms like diameter or young modulus and you know other length value is it done all of you 
Is it done? Can I move to the next slide? Can I move to the next slide? Now, not only strain. What do you mean by this strain? What do you mean by this strain? Change in length by original length, we call what? A strain, right? Change in length by original length, suppose any body is there which is fixed. When I load it by amounts of uh, amount of P, what will happen at the fixed end? There is a what? Uh, there is a what? A resistance will be developed, a reaction force will be developed, and because of this my different load, there is a deformation. There is a, some kind of deformation will happen. There is a, some kind of deformation will happen. The final length will be more than initial length. Now this difference will be what? Difference will be called as L F minus L I change in length is called as what delta L a strain value is defined as change in the length by original length we define by what one term that is called a strain now tell me the you know a strain is a vector quantity or a scalar quantity even if I just ask you about the stress also you need to tell me the unit of uh, sorry whether it's a vector quantity or no scalar quantity, stress and strain. Very, very important. Tell me, guys. Scalar quantity, you don't have any direction, you want to say that. Then why we are writing something like this? A strain in x direction, in y direction, in z direction. Vector quantity. Vector means one magnitude, one magnitude and one direction. Is it so? Many directions, right? It got many directions. One magnitude, but many directions. Even many magnitudes, many directions. Tell me, guys, is it not the contradictory statement that you are giving right now? If you are saying vector quantity, it got only one magnitude, one direction. Simply, just like a velocity, acceleration, and the force. Whether you want to categorize in that manner about the stress and strain or something else. Yes, please tell me. Yes. Tell me guys. Hello, hello. Can you hear me, all of you? All of you can hear me? Yes. See, a strain is nothing but, or a stress is nothing but, please note down, a stress and a strain, both are second order tensor. Tensor quantity. Please note down, very, very important. 
what is the meaning of second order tensor the quantity for which the physical quantity for which we have the magnitude is plus the magnitude but many directions but many directions you don't have only single direction right it got multiple directions at a particular point lot of stress is going to be acting right sigma xx sigma yy sigma at a particular angle right here also it will be a particular angle suppose that at a one particular point lot of directions in lot of direction the stress is going to be acting that is what we are calling what second order tensor then you will ask me sir what is the first order tensor vector first order tensor will be vector what is the zero order tensor what is the zero order tensor a scalar which has only one magnitude but there is no direction right all of you are understanding all of you are getting my point tell me guys perfect so here also when we talk about this strain then we just define this strain in two category normal strain and shear strain right normal strain shear strain again normal strain we have the two types tensile strain and compressive strain whenever any member is elongated then there is a tensile strain will be developed whenever any member is compressed then we say it's a compressive stress right compressive strain so yeah no doubt very very important once it is done please let me know we can discuss something about this strain we can discuss something about this particular strain i will just give a, a very deep meaning about this particular you know strain yes now i will give just just example by that example i think that will be clarified the things will be clarified suppose that the initial diameter is what d initial diameter is what suppose d or di initial diameter after applying the load after applying the load suppose that it is getting deformed to something like this now it is being elongated now it is being elongated suppose that suppose that it is being elongated now the final length is what l2 initial diameter let's suppose d1 initial length is what suppose l1 now the final length will be sorry final diameter will be suppose that d2 if i'll ask you what is the longitudinal strain longitudinal longitudinal you know strain then what you will answer me and if i'll ask you lateral strain then what you will answer me before that let me discuss about let me just write strain we can just define in two category normal strain and shear strain shear strain we will talk later on right now there is no signi significance for, uh, particularly for the next one hour right in normal strain we can just define under again three category the first category will be longitudinal strain the first category will be longitudinal strain longitudinal strain the second category will be lateral strain and the third category will be my different volumetric strain please note down very very important and of course strain can be positive and it can be negative also right now so longitudinal strain will be will be what 
it is defined as the normal strain developed in the direction of normal strain in the direction of applied load in the direction of applied load i will tell you the shortcut also sir this is a longitudinal axis right this is the longitudinal axis along the longitudinal direction whenever the load is applied along that direction whenever you are finding this strain value remember it's a longitudinal strain and how to calculate this one how to calculate the longitudinal strain change in length by original length this one guys l2 minus l1 by l1 check it out please check it out <coughs> now when i talk about the lateral strain the strain developed in the the strain developed the strain developed in the direction the strain developed the strain developed in a dire in the direction perpendicular to the applied load the load sorry the load has been applied in this direction whenever the strain is developed in this direction perpendicular to that load that is called lateral strain and how to calculate the lateral strain tell me guys how to calculate the lateral strain i would say the lateral strain suppose that in the y direction i am saying that and this perpendicular direction will be my z direction suppose that then what will be the answer of the lateral strain either you calculate y direction or z direction because it's a cylinder one either you calculate in the y or z both will be same thing now tell me what will be the answer for the lateral strain change in dimension which are happening in the laterally to the original dimension what are the dimension changes happening in the lateral direction diameter or length diameter or length change in diameter only change in diameter by original diameter that means d2 minus d1 divided by d1 now the lateral strain is coming out to be what negative why the lateral strain is negative because d2 is what less than d1 but when you just consider longitudinal strain it is positive because l2 is more than l1 that's why i mentioned that the strain in fact normal strain can be positive or negative right normal strain can be positive or negative rather to write strain you can just write over here this can be positive or this can be negative also very very important please note down what do you mean by the volumetric strain what do you mean by the volumetric strain change in the volume by original volume change in volume by original volume as of now i have given you the cylinder diameter cylindrical bar i have given you cylindrical bar can you calculate uh, the volumetric strain for this particular bar all of you you might have done this particular uh, particular homework also before classes also what will be the volumetric strain for this particular cylindrical bar which is having a diameter and the length see 3d figure will be look something like this understanding or not all of you all of you are getting my point check it out please check it out yes right shall we do in the next slide shall we do in the next slide all of you done all of you done all of you remaining guys, remaining guys please try to reply now i am going to consider this cylindrical bar this is my 2d figure you must be understanding the you know engineering drawing this is the diameter initial diameter this is the initial length suppose that now suppose i am finding the volume what is the volume of the cylinder pi by 4 d square into l suppose that suppose right suppose i am writing d and l what is the change in volume 
what is the change in volume? Pi by 4. First of all, I am uh, differentiating d. That will be 2d. That will be 2d into delta d into L plus again pi by 4 d square into change in the length. What will be the change in the length? Delta L. So I'm just following what? Chan rule. What I'm doing? Chan rule. Now what I'm doing? I'm just dividing by V. I'm just dividing by V. So what I will be getting? dv by v will be pi by 4 2d into l into delta d. What is the volume? pi by 4 d square into l plus pi by 4 d square into delta l divided by pi by 4 d square into l. So this is going to be cancelled out. This is going to be cancelled out. So what I will be calculating dv by v will be 2 into delta d divided by d plus again this will cancel out this will cancel out so delta l by l my dear friend you know that this is called as what what we call this thing two times of lateral strain plus longitudinal strain yes or no guys we also call linear strain sometime please no no very very important Now, if I just give the uh, question or example to cubical element, when I give the example of cubical element, and if I'll ask you after applying the loading condition, suppose I'm applying the loading condition, something like this. And now if I'm going to ask you what will be the volumetric strain, what will be the volumetric strain for this particular figure? The load is acting in the x direction, that's it. Then what you will say? So the volume will be a cube. Change in volume will be what? 3a square divided by v will be what? a cube. Then what we can calculate? Volumetric strain as 3 times of what? Delta a will also be coming. Delta a will also be coming. So what I will be calculating? Delta a divided by what? a. Change in diameter by original diameter. What will be the answer? 3 times of linear strain. Yes or no guys? Check it out. All of you are understanding? How to calculate the volumetric strain? Because it's a very easy to calculate longitudinal or linear strain. Uh, it is very easy to calculate, you know, a lateral strain. But it is very difficult to calculate, you know, volumetric strain sometimes. Now, once uh, is it done, let me know. Actually, in thin cylinder case, Actually, in thin cylinder case, we rather call this formula as two times of lateral strain. This lateral strain will become hoop strain. Anyone of you can remember? And this linear will be called as longitudinal, of course, having same meaning. Hoop strain or circumferential strain. Right? While discussing the thin cylinder, I will discuss in detail. Do not worry. Right? Done. Please note it down. Very, very important. Done, all of you. Not only Hooke's law. Not only Hooke's law. What do you mean by the Hooke's law, guys? Any one of you? Any one of you? Can you please elaborate this particular Hooke's law? And where it is valid? Till which point this Hooke's law is valid? That is the next question. Whenever the material is loaded within the elastic limit, the stress will be proportional to the linear strain. Please complete this statement. Linear strain. Whenever I write linear strain, I mean that the longitudinal strain, right? Very, very good. Yeah. So stress will be directly proportional to strain, longitudinal strain. Please complete this statement. And if I remove the proportionality, I will be getting one constant. This constant will be called as elastic constant. And that elastic constant will be called as 
Young's modulus of, you know, Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity. Note down very, very important. Right, and remember Hooke's law is valid for, you know, uniaxial state of stress. Uniaxial state of stress. Hooke's law is valid for uniaxial state of stress. What do you mean by uniaxial? When any member is subjected to only sigma xx, that means there is a no other forces are acting. That means there is a no sigma y, there is a no other component. Tau xz, tau xy will also be zero. When no other, that means no norm, no other normal stress or shear stress is acting on that element, then only Hooke's law is valid, right? In only one direction, either x direction or y direction. It should not be combined direction. You will understand in the principal stress chapter, when we load the material in both the direction, x, x and y direction, then we just try to find the, you know, combined effect that uh, that particular thing will be discussed in the principal stress. As of now, we cannot discuss. Now, done all of you. For uh, uh, clearly tell you the meaning of plastic limit and plastic limit, let me discuss about uh, di discuss about the stress strain curve. Shall we discuss? Shall we discuss about the stress and strain curve? Tell me guys. Perfect. Now, try to understand. Yes. Now, in fact, you better just note down, you know, I will tell you the graph. Note down, it's a very, very important graph that will be useful whenever you are attending any interview, that will be useful. Stress versus strain graph, that is very, very important. Now, clarity must be there while drawing this particular graph, what are all the, all the points are there, that point must be allocated very carefully. So, of course, uh, it's somewhat a uh, big diagram. Let me just expand this uh, x axis. Now, so if I talk about the point, uh, there's a point A, then there is a point B, then there is a point C, there is a point C dash D, on top of that E. And after that, we are going to have the point F, right? And of course, some of the values you can just, you know, still if you're not writing that is, there is no problem. Now, so what is the point A? What is the point A? Point A is proportional limit. Whatever the curve we are just seeing from O to A is exactly linear one. Linear one, right? Now, if I just talk about the point B, what is the point B? Elastic limit. So, what is the meaning of elastic limit? Tell me guys, Hooke's law is valid up to proportional limit. Hooke's law is valid up to point A only. Remember, Hooke's law is valid up to point A only. 
in all the textbook even i have also written the elastic limit but precisely it it, it is valid up to what proportional limit only right after that elastic limit is saying that if you just unload the material if you just unload the material there will not be any plastic deformation in the material right entire strain will be released there will not be any permanent deformation that means after this point if you just unload it after unloading the material regain its shape that is what we call elasticity property right all of you are understanding the difference between proportional limit and you know elastic limit then what about the point c what about the point c upper yield point we say upper yield point what about point d we call lower yield point not tell me in our design purpose this is i'm calling upper yield point and this is suppose lower yield point suppose anywhere it is being written sigma yield value 250 mega pascal suppose that for you know mild steel anywhere you just find the textbook it is written as 250 mega pascal that value is this point c point value or this particular c dash point value very very important which is the my design stress among all which is my design stress which is our design stress all of you please what will be the answer which is my design stress point c or point you know again all of you please reply all of you please reply upper yield point is a design stress point or lower yield point is a design stress point yes all of you i just need the answer from all of you please let me know all of you please let me know the answer c or d c or d remaining guys upper all are giving just incorrect answer my dear friend this will not be design point the lower yield point will be my design point this will be my design stress so whenever they mention yield stress that means they mention lower yield point value right that means this is what we have 250 mega pascal understanding all of your understanding all of your understanding now somebody is very much interested to know sir why we are calling lower yield point to be the design stress point my dear friend point c of course the things will be clarified in the material science but yes still i am just giving you you oh know small uh, actually the reason so that it can be very useful for you point c is what very very highly unstable point the moment you keep on applying the load the strain value will be what keep on developing in this direction right but the point c is what highly unstable any material do not want to be uh, stay at that particular point it will jump to the what point c and then it will what stabilize and after that my dear friend from here there will be what plastic deformation begins here we say that plastic deformation is what begins my dear friend before that whatever the deformation might be there that is what elastic deformations all of you under, under, understanding my point check it out because upper yield point is highly unstable point upper yield point is what highly unstable point that's the reason what whenever the any material see in the material science uh, you might be understanding the dislocation and all kinds of theory try to remember when the upper yield point is achieved the dislocation gets free the dislocation whatever the dislocations are there that will be getting free that will causing that will be making sure that the stress is what coming down now again a lot of you might be confused sir what is what actually you are talking about 
I'm talking about strain hardening and strain softening. Again, I do not want to involve so many things in the same slide. Things will be clarified when slowly, slowly I will discuss each and everything. Hardening means, see, whenever you are arresting movement of anything, suppose that I am arresting your movement. I'm not allowing you to come, uh, come out from your house after 9 p.m. That means I'm just moving very, very restricted cases. Then what I actually am doing, I'm imposing very, very hard cases to you. That is one type of hardening thing. The movement, this dislocation and this restriction will be what? Erase out. It will be removed. Then you will be what? Getting free. The moment you got free, will you stay at your home? Tell me guys. Suppose after 9 p.m. this uh, this particular thing will be removed that the uh, whatever the before restrictions are there. The, now the restriction is being what? Eradicated. Now tell me whether you will stay at the home. No, you will be getting free. That's the particular thing will happen to the material also. The movement restriction will be, uh, you know, basically removed. The, it will come down like this. And that will come down to what? Point C. Then it will what? Stabilize after that. So that's the reason we are calling this point C to be called what? Point C to be called as design stress point. That is a lower yield point. Very, very important, guys. Please note it down. Many times in many interviews, you, you, we just talk about this row many times, bark many times. And maybe some other, you know, examination, uh, maybe other PSCs also state PSC, they ask multiple language questions. Please note it down. Now, when I talk about the zones, very, very important. Zones are also very, very important. Now, why there is a uh, formation of lower yield point and upper yield point, that is being the discussion of the material science. If I keep on discussing, again, half an hour will be gone, right? So, I'm not discussing. Just remember that there is a lower yield point and upper yield point. And whichever is the design stress point, lower yield point. That's it. Suddenly what will happen when we keep on applying the load, the deformation is keep on happening, right? This D to E zone, this particular D to E zone will be called as strain hardening zone. Note down, strain hardening zone. Are you understanding the meaning of strain hardening zone? What is the meaning of strain? Can I say movement simply? Can I say the movement simply? The E is the deformation. The easily the deformation, the easily the uh, larger value of the strain achieved, right? All of you understanding what I'm talking about? X axis means simply the movement. Yes or no, guys? All of you, please let me know. And what about the stress value? Simply the meaning of load because indirectly the load per unit area is what the stress value. That means after D point, the things got changes suddenly. C to D, the things are moving very, very calmly and composedly, right? In fact, if suppose you want to uh, deform any material, you do not want to apply so much of load. Even at the constant load, the deformation is happening. Suddenly, my different after D point, you got to know that the movement got restricted, everything got, you know, hacked. Like anything, everything is what? Just getting arrested, the moment getting what? Arrested, the moment of what? Particle, right? Arrested at the unit cell level, so that what is happening? Now we need to apply more and more amount of load for deformation. That's the reason load is increased, stress value, stress value will also increase. Check it out. The moment strain value is also increased, the load is also what? Getting increased. This situation is called as strain hardening. Please note it down. T to E reason is what? called as, you know, D to E reason is called as strain hardening reason. Please note down, very important. This region, my dear friend, this region is called elastic region. In fact, you can just stretch, uh, stretch it out to what? Point B also, up to the point B also. Elastic region. Elastic zone. Right, very, very important. What is the strain softening zone? What is the strain softening zone? From E to F, from E to F, whatever the zone is there that we are calling what? This region we are calling, this region we are calling the strain softening region. Understanding my point? 
strain softening region the region from e to f and I, of course i forgot to mention what is the point e what is the point e can i say ultimate point sorry can i say ultimate point what is the meaning of ultimate point what is the meaning of ultimate point maximum value of the stress value achieved by the material that is called what ultimate stress point right what is the f pointer what is the pointer fracture point very good fracture point note down very very important strain softening zone that means in this zone material will uh, undergo large permanent permanent deformation large permanent deformation but at a very very low amount of loading conditions right actually e to f why we are just plotting e to f there is a you know intentionally we are drawing e to f diagram from the universal testing machine of course uh, i forgot to mention whatever the stress and strain diagram is there how we are obtaining who is giving this diagram some person is there if that person is there what's the name of that person suppose some customer will be coming to you you are opening some entrepreneur suppose you are entrepreneur and you are opening one company somebody will be coming to you you are giving in the form of a drawing suppose that that means you are providing whole idea about you about your uh, product in the particular diagram similarly the idea or the property of the any product or material will be given in the form of a stress and strain diagram who will be giving that anybody know tell me guys universal testing machine you have done the uh, particular testing has been performed right in the you know second year first semester you have the strength of material lab as well as subject also in the universal testing machine when you load the material suppose there is the upper jaw and the lower jaw and there is a material in that the material has been fixed in that and we are pulling keep on pulling pulling after that we keep on applying the load there is a beside that there is a one machine uh, in that same machine there is a one paper is there that will be what just inserted after that what it is just giving the result in the form of what diagram maybe any material suppose ductile material brittle material any material will place it accordingly the diagram will be given to you based on the failure how the failure is happening right you know that generally the uh, you know uh, whatever the ductile materials are there uh, they do so the particular you know permanent deformations right plastic failures they so that's the reason we are having ill point phenomena in bitter material you don't have such a kind of ill, uh, Ill point phenomena directly it will fail directly fracture will be coming now done whether it is getting done all of you all of you perfect now note on the graph some of the graph that is very very important for you to understand suppose the graph is something like this o to a stress versus strain then for this particular graph is there for which one can i say it's a rigid body whatever the body you are studying in the strength of material sorry in the engineering mechanics that is what the diagram will be there right there will not be any uh, any deformation there will not be any strain right no deformation no strain no deformation no strain when i say deformation there is a two types of deformation elastic deformation plastic deformation in a strength of material you are talking only about the elastic deformation whatever the formula upcoming formulas you will see in the slides that is the elastic deformation formula whatever the plastic deformation will happen that you are going to learn in the production subject in the metal forming right in the metal forming while uh, you know cold drawing operation or maybe drawing operation wire drawing you know uh, suppose you are doing wire drawing operation or maybe other operation like extrusion process there you, you will come to know the importance of plastic deformation zone understanding
Tell me, guys. Is it done, all of you? No. Note on the second graph that is also very important. A stress versus strain graph. But here it will be, uh, suppose the diagram will be like this. If the diagram will be something like this, then what we call? Then what we call? Perfectly plastic material, right? Perfectly plastic material. In a single deformation, in a single strain value, particularly sigma 1, the deformation is keep on happening like water, right? Like a water. In production subject, you want your material to behave like a plastic material, right? You don't want material to be have so much of restriction to deform, right? Understanding or not all of you? Now, when you draw the diagram for the third material, uh, you can draw the diagram something like this. Which type of diagram it is? Linear elastic plastic material, right? Yes or no, guys? All of you. All of you are understanding? Now, whenever the diagram will be something like this, stress versus strain diagram, but you have the plot like this. Linear one, but suddenly it is like this. Sorry. Initially, it was linear one. After that, it is become, become what? Curvature and it is increased. This type of curve we call strain hardening curve. Strain hardened material. Whenever we have the curve, something like this, stress versus strain, like this. Suppose that there is a downward linear one, but again it is just getting downwards. Strain softening material. Strain softened material. Very, very important. Please note down. What will be the diagram for brittle material? Tell me guys. Very important. What will be the diagram? Sorry. Stress versus strain. How the diagram will look for brittle material? Just like a glass. If I'll ask you the glass. Something like this. That's it. There is a no yielding, nothing will be there. No yield point, no upper yield point, lower yield point, nothing will be there. Directly the failure point will come. That's it. That is called glass or brittle material. Note down very, very important. Right. So these are the, some of the graphs that is very, very important. One more important interview question is there. Why we are plotting always stress on X, uh, Y axis and strain on X axis? Anybody know the reason? Why we are not plotting like this? Strain on y axis and stress on x axis. Why this is wrong and this is correct? There is a proper reason for that. Tell me, guys. Yes. Anybody know the reason for this? See, strain is nothing but strain is nothing but actually independent phenomena. Stress is dependent phenomena. I will tell you by example also. Do not worry. Stress is uh, dependent phenomena on strain, but a strain is what independent. That means a strain is possible without any stress, but stress is not possible without having any strain value. Right? 
again you will ask me sir what is the interrelation between this graph and what we are talking about you know that the time the time always plotted on x axis why because time is what independent phenomena right the time is just like a independent phenomena y is equal to function of time something like this so why any other variable is there which are plotting on y axis and time will be plotted on x axis similarly sigma will be the function of what strain only always always either it will be linear function or it will be k epsilon to the power m right anybody have any idea about this first one that is what when power is one that is a hook's law when the power is n anybody know this one this law Anybody know sigma will be equal to k to the power k into epsilon to the power n. Tell me guys, participate. You might have learned each and everything in BTEC also, in production subject. Please let me know as quickly as possible. This is called power law, not a Hooke's law. Remember, whatever this zone is there, this one, this will be solved by power law. This elastic region will be solved by Hooke's law. All of you are getting my point? Our strength of material do not go beyond this C point. The moment you just enter beyond the C point, you will enter in the production subject, right? All of you are understanding what I'm talking about. Tell me guys, these are the very fundamental thing. Believe me, these are the very important because all the things, other things, you know that already, right? Then there has to be some difference. What you understand, what you know before and what you're understanding after attending the classes now. So is it done? So whenever the independent parameters are there, that always represented on x axis. Similarly, independent like time, we have the strain. That's why uh, that's why we are representing this uh, strain uh, particular terms or quantity in x axis, not on the y axis. No doubt, very very important. Is it done? In fact, you don't have anything also. In fact, you can just draw, you know, this diagram for brittle material simply like this. Like this. That's it. You know, directly the failure, failure points will be coming. Just, uh, you know, a straight line and slightly some percentage curvature will be there. If you just see by microscope, then, then only you can see. Right? No yielding at all. No yielding at all. Now, note down the deformation of the body due to force acting on it. That means any body is there, which I am going to apply the force P, then there will be deformation. Then there will be deformation like this. Then there will be deformation like this and because of that my dear friend change in length will be there extra deformation is there this is called deformation delta this is called delta l how to find delta l how to find delta l you know that stress value uh, strain value to be sigma by e again you know that sigma will be what p by a into e and what is the Sigma, uh, what is the epsilon? Delta L by L. From here, what is the delta L? P L divided by A. And this is called as elastic deformation. Please note down. P L by A. Very, very important.
Is it done, all of you? Now, now here there is a one uh, very good problem we have, one very good segment we have. The deformation of the body due to its self weight. Whenever there is a self weight is acting, whenever there is a self weight is there, no external load, only self weight of the body is there, which is hanging from this particular top thing, something like this. There is a no load. Again, I am saying there is a no load only just because of the weight, self weight. What will be the deformation will happen? No doubt. Consider a bar AB, which is hanging in as shown in the figure 2.4. The length of the bar is L. A is nothing but cross-sectional area of the bar. Cross-sectional can be anything, the square, circular, anything, rectangle, anything. E will be Young's modulus of the bar. W will be specific weight of the bar. Specific weight, you know, in the fluid mechanics, rho g, right? What is the self-weight, my dear friend? Mg. Rho G B. Rho G is what? Rho G is what? Small W. That is a specific weight. What is the volume? What is the volume? Area into X. I am taking at a particular distance. I am taking one section. I am taking one particular section at a distance X from the bottom one. From the bottom one. From the bottom one, I am taking one section X. Something like this. Right? That is my load XX. Now you know that formula delta will be what? P into dx divided by a into e. Actually, when I integrate from 0 to l, I will be getting p l divided by a only as you are getting in the previous one. In the previous one, you are getting the same thing. But my dear friend, right now, what is the difference between a previous case and this case? Here, the load is varying with respect to x. So directly, I cannot take outside of the integration. I need to write p will be as rho into a into x. That's it. So if you just write it out, p will be as, you know, integration of here, let me write once again. Let me just write once again. If you just integrate, delta L will be PXX into DX divided by AE. How much of deformation of this particular zone, this one, this is a small element, when I integrate it, I will be getting total deformation from 0 to L. PXX is what? W into A into X into DX divided by what? A into E. A will cancel out. I will I will be integrating from what 0 to L. So what I'll be calculating? W into L square divided by 2E. W into L square divided by 2E. In sort, in total, if I just want to write in terms of what total weight, if I just want to write in terms of total weight, what is the total weight? Small w into area into what? Length. Small L. Rho G into area into what? smaller that is the total weight in terms of total weight if you just want to write the small w small w will be what w divided by a into l you replace that one you'll be getting what w l divided by 2 a e it is very similar formula but whatever the deformation will happen due to self weight will be just half of the you know due to external load Suppose external load value is what? P that is equal to total weight W. In that case, P L divided by 2 A E, P L divided by A E. It will be just like that. Understanding or not? Check it out. Deformation under self weight will be just half of the deformation under external load. Right? All of your understanding? Tell me guys. This is a very, very important. Is it done guys, all of you? All of you done? That means, can I draw the loading diagram? 
Can I draw the loading diagram? The load is varying with respect to x is what? Linear one. A is constant, W is constant. The specific weight of any material is constant. Rho is constant, G is constant. Rho is constant, G is constant, area is constant. It is directly proportional to x. If I just plot it, it will be something like this. Maximum weight will be acting, you know, maximum weight will be acting at the top and the zero load will be acting at the bottom. This is my loading diagram. How the load is going to vary with respect to what? X. Understanding? Yes or no, guys? Perfect. Please note it down. Done all of you? Perfect. Now we are going to discuss about the stresses and strain in the bars of varying cross section, right? Whatever the deformation you have seen, that is for single bar. Now, if you have the multiple bars, where we just combine together multiple bars, in that particular case, what will be the scenario? Tell me guys, the case one I'm going to discuss is bars in series. The members which are being connected in series combination, first thing we are going to discuss. Whenever the members are connected end to end, that is called series connection. Suppose I'm applying the load P like this, like this to a particular member. The moment you are applying the load in this direction, P direction, how to find the delta value? Remember, whenever the bars are connected in series, when there is a no, when there is a no intermediate force, when there is a no intermediate forces, intermediate force, when there is a no intermediate force in the member, then the first conclusion we can draw, the P will value or the load value will same. in all the member that means p in ab bar p in bc bar p in cd bar will be same p second conclusion we can draw total deformation will be delta ab delta bc delta cd no doubt total deformation will be delta ab delta bc delta cd all of your understanding or not how to find delta AB? PXX, sorry, sorry, sorry. Delta AB formula is there. PAB, length AB, AAB, EAB. Yes or no, guys? What is the P that is acting in the AB member? What is the P that is acting in the AB member when I take the cross section? Plus P or minus P? Wherever the load is going away from the cross section, plus P. Remember this end convention like this. Now you take the cross section in BC. What will be the load in BC member? Plus P or minus P? Plus P or minus P? Similarly, what will be the load in CD member? Plus P. Right? Now, some of you might be confused. For those, I am just explaining you the sign convention. Note down the sign convention. Note down the sign convention that is very, very important. Sign convention that is the first sign convention that we are discussing, my dear friend, for axial loading. For axial loading, try to follow the sign convention throughout the chapter, throughout the chapters of the strength of material. Whenever the bar is subjected to load something like this, and when you take the xx cross section, then load in xx cross section will be plus p. The load is acting away from this member plus P. But when you just take, apply the member load something like this, P in this direction. And when you take the cross section XX, then what about the forces in the member minus P? 
this is called tensile load and this is called compressive load note down very very important this is called tensile load and this is called compressive load very very important please note it down sign conventions once it is done please let me know once it is done please let me know done all of you perfect perfect so similarly if you just follow the sign convention my dear friend you will be getting forces in ab member bc member cd member to be same p p p p plus p so p into l what is the length l1 area is what a1 and what is the young's modulus suppose young's modulus is same for all the material i am taking e only similarly delta l2 similarly if you just find the delta bc then how you can find p l2 divided by a2 into e similarly for delta cd we just find p into l3 l3 divided by what a3 into e now if you just combine together it will be what in this particular format this is what total deformation no down total deformation now if the young's modulus sometime it will be different for different different section then we can draw conclusion from this one no down very very important Is it done all of you? Wherever the bars are connected in series, then how to find the total deformation or individual deformation, whether it's clear? Tell me guys. Is it done? Tell us all one or two problem. No. No. Try to solve this problem that is there. Remember, I mentioned the condition: the load will be same in all the member until unless there is a no internal forces. But in this question, there is an internal forces, my dear friend. In this particular question, there is an internal forces, right? Separately, we have to draw the free body diagram. For individual member, free body diagram for individual members. Very very important. Try to see and try to understand the methods which I am going to follow. First of all, I am going to take the member AB. What is the load that is acting? Ten kilo newton, right? Yes or no, guys? Ten kilo newton. I said that whenever you are drawing the free body diagram of any member. Whenever you are drawing the free body diagram of any member or any joint, it has to be under static equilibrium conditions. Free body diagram. I'm not talk talking about the whole member. In whole member, there must be deformation. I'm not denying from the fact. But if you are just taking free body diagram of individual member or individual joint, there must be static equilibrium conditions. If there is a 10 kilo newton indirectly to balance it out. We must apply 10 kilo newton over in this section. Not believing? Check it out. Either you calculate left in the left hand side, or maybe in the from the right hand side, you will be getting 10 kilo newton load only in PAB plus 10 kilo newton. Either you calculate from left hand side, or you just calculate from right hand side. Not believing? Check it out. Left hand side plus 10 according to sign convention. Right hand side plus 2. Plus three, plus five. Check it out. 
plus 10 kilo Newton, are you getting or not? Either left side or right side. Do not follow both the sides at a time. Understanding all of you? All of you are understanding what actually I'm talking about? Now, when you draw the free body diagram of BC member, see, this is very important. This is very, very important. BC member. In BC member, at a particular cross section, plus 10 away from the giant, plus 10 away from that particular BC member, but minus 2 is also coming. So, what is the total? Plus 8 kilo Newton. Check it out. I have calculated from left side. Not believing? Calculate from right hand side. Right hand side, right hand side, plus 3, plus 5. Away. Follow the sign convention. Plus 8 kilo Newton. From right hand side. Are you understanding my point? All of you are understanding my point? All of you are understanding my point? Perfect. Now, if I simply ask you what should be the CD force, what will be the force in CD member? Simply what you will say, simply what you will say, sir, it's a 5 kilo Newton force, here also 5 kilo Newton, plus 5 kilo Newton. My dear friend, my dear friend, you got all the forces, you need to find total elongation, simply what you will do, you know. Total elongation, delta AB, delta BC, delta CD. That's it. You need to do only three things, AB, BC, CD. Now, I'll just give the idea. AB will be what? PAB. Length of AB will be what? 2 meter. Convert in, convert in terms of what? Convert in terms of meter, mm. 2000 mm. PL divided by area. What will be the area? What will be the area? 3 meter diameter, 3 mm diameter, pi by 4, 3 square. And what is the Young's modulus? 205 into 1000. That is a way to calculate delta AB. Similarly, calculate delta BC. Similarly, calculate delta CD. For delta, you need only P. That's it. L will be given, A will be given, E will be given. Respective member, respective deformation. Add it, you will be getting the answer. Understanding? And of course, uh, fortunately, they have given the E value same for all the member. But sometimes E value will be different also, right? Understanding or not? Now, last question I will be asking you. Okay, just note down. Sorry. Just note down very quickly. Then we can wrap up this session. Note down fast. Calculation you can do afterwards. Calculation you can do afterwards. Just find the individual deformation. Just add it. You will be getting the answer. What was the option will be there, right? That has been asked in engineering services 2019 problem. There also we don't have calculator, right? Now, of course, Hooke's law will be valid up to what? Elastic limit. No yield point, no plastic limit, nothing. Only elastic limit. Now, let me ask you one question that is very, very important question. Member, this is there and let me draw another member. Member A, B, C, if I'm drawing. I'm taking the cross section xx. E value is what? Different. Suppose that. Young's modulus value for AB member and for BC member is different. I'm asking one question. Option A. Sigma in AB will be cross section area is also same. Loading condition suppose that P only. BC. Sigma AB will be less than BC. Sigma AB will be Sigma BC divided by 2. E2 is given. 
टू टाइम्स ऑफ ई वन सिग्मा ए बी विल बी इक्वल टू सिग्मा बी सी all of you please look at it very carefully then answer do not answer in a very hurry take your time just think little bit and then try to give me the answer all of you what will be the answer what will be the answer p what the answer you are giving me it's a random answer i am getting a c which option is correct what is the stress value suppose you want to calculate stress in normal stress in what ab member there is a formula pab cross sectional area what is the pab what is the load plus p what is the load in bc member plus p then try to calculate pbc divided by area both will be what p by a p by a are you getting my point are you getting my point for determinate structure for simply bar stress value will be independent of the what young's modulus of elasticity understanding my point right is it done all of you do not think in a very detail manner so sigma will be you know sigma will be uh, something like uh, e into epsilon then i will try to find delta l something like pl divided by ae and all kinds of stuff do not do it do not involve in those things right deformation will be there then there is a you know difference will be there right if i just talk about the deformation then p into suppose length will be you know l1 and l2 suppose that in that case p into l1 divided by what a into e1 in that case l1 and e1 in fact l1 and l2 is also same but still deformation will not be same still deformation will not be same still deformation will not be same because what p into l divided by suppose that both are equal to l divided by a into e1 delta bc will be p into l divided by what a into e2 e1 and e2 both are different that's why deformation will not be same that's the reason why different e is different some of you might be thinking is sorry sigma is same epsilon is same e must e must be same when e is different then epsilon must epsilon will also be what different indirectly deformation will also be different but if i just talk about the stress value this will be same right understanding the conceptual difference right all of you are understanding or not okay guys so all of you have noted down all of you have noted down all of you have noted down still somebody is there who is just noting down let me confirm shall i close it perfectly so thank you guys you can leave for the day yes yeah thank you all